Xiaomi is back at it again and now this time they have unveiled the new Mi 11 Ultra. From the design and the uh, naming scheme, it's pretty evident that uh, they are targeting the Galaxy S21 Ultra and uh, they are claiming this to be the best smartphone or the most premium smartphone that you can get. Pricing isn't clear as of now but they do confirm that the price will be less than a lakh in India. So that is still pretty expensive, way more expensive than uh, customers have gotten used to seeing from Xiaomi. But yeah, I mean I think it's time that they are tapped into the ultra premium market as well. The Mi 11 Ultra is all about those cameras so let's talk about them first. It's featuring the latest uh, Samsung GN2 sensor which is already an improvement over the uh, impressive GN1 50 megapixel sensor which we have seen in the likes of uh, Vivo X60 Pro Plus and uh, stuff like that. It was a pretty capable sensor on its own but the GN2 is an even larger 1 over 1.12 micrometer sensor. Additionally there are two more cameras on the back, one is a 48 megapixel ultra wide and a 48 megapixel 5x telephoto. All three cameras can do stabilized 8K video independently which is pretty amazing. With some excellent hardware and software stabilization, they have managed to get some smooth looking 8K video, the likes of which I certainly haven't seen from any other smartphone yet. I'm seriously impressed because cameras haven't been Xiaomi's strong point till now, Vivo, Oppo and other Chinese companies were the leaders in that. I'm really surprised how they managed to turn things around with their new phones. They're using something called ultra night photos to give you better night mode shots combined with that 1.4 micrometer pixel sizes. And their 4 axis stabilization on the main camera is honestly competing with the likes of Vivo's gimbal camera. It's not quite there yet in low light scenarios and there is quite a lot of jitter because of higher shutter speeds but um, you have to commend Xiaomi for their efforts here. I mean there's a whole second AMOLED display on the back right next to the cameras. I mean what more do you want from a phone? It has that same QHD quad curved AMOLED display that we have seen from other phones with the 120Hz refresh rate and of course it supports a 10 bit color. It has an advertised 1700 nits of peak brightness but of course that may be only in the uh, bright outdoors environment only for a few minutes. It has a 5000 mAh battery capable of 67 watts of wired and wireless charging with 10 watts of reverse wireless charging. Under the hood there's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 powering everything so the performance will be stellar, no surprises there. It only comes in two color variants, ceramic white and ceramic black, keeping it minimal just like Vivo did. It has IP68 ingress protection and uh, the speakers are tuned by Harman Kardon. It still has an IR blaster but no headphone jack. I mean I don't know why they kept an IR blaster because I think for a fact that many people use a headphone jack more than an IR blaster but hey that's cool. And they're advertising this to be the highest scoring phone in uh, DxOMark tests but uh, at this point uh, DxOMark has lost all meaning. Mainly because companies can now work with DxOMark and uh, fine tune their cameras and the software to match DxOMark's testing. And of course if you fine tune your camera for one particular environment and if you test it in the same environment it'll obviously give you good results. So it all fell down with OnePlus actually. They started doing that with the uh, OnePlus 7 Pro and all that. But anyway the camera does uh, perform very well as seen from some real world tests. So yeah, things are looking up for the Mi 11 Ultra. The only thing the customers have to deal with is the uh, super sized uh, camera hump in this super phone. I mean I guess it's fine to have a tiny display on the back that shows you your notifications and can possibly also act as a viewfinder. Some other phones have tried to do that as well like the uh, Galaxy Z Flip. But uh, I mean it's such a tiny screen I'm not sure how advanced it would be but I guess they wanted to have the camera bump taking up all of the back and they didn't know what else to fit there other than the uh, flash and the camera module so they kind of threw in a display. I mean oh well if you can't really hide the camera hump then might as well embrace it. They could have done something cool like warping the glass around the uh, camera hump something like the Oppo did with their Find X3 Pro that was genuinely amazing. But I guess Oppo was boasting about how difficult that process is for a reason. I guess no other companies were able to do it uh, in the way that they have manufactured. But anyway, that's a brief summary of what you have to know with the Mi 11 Ultra. What do you think of this super phone? Since this phone is pretty much guaranteed to come in the ultra premium category here in India, so it'll cost anywhere from 80 to 90,000 rupees. Would you be willing to pay that much for a Xiaomi phone? I mean I get that it's an amazing phone but there are many people who look at a phone from its brand. I'm not sure why they do that but uh, if you are one of those people then uh, I would like to know what you're thinking of. Would you rather spring for a Samsung S21 Ultra or an iPhone or are you willing to give this triple camera 8K video monster a shot? Let me know in the comments down below and of course subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you soon. Cheers.